Okay, let's do some science. Um, every good scientist has a periodic table. And so we're going to learn about LEDs. And we're going to learn about all different colors of LEDs. And we're going to learn about how white LEDs work. And so we need to start understanding what a semiconductor is. So I'm here in Silicon Valley. So silicon is the most famous uh, semiconductor. Silicon, where is silicon? Silicon is here. Silicon's number 14. But we don't need to know those numbers. We don't care about those numbers. What we care about is these numbers on top. Okay? So all these numbers on top tell you how many valence electrons you have. Those are the, the outside electrons in an, in an atom. How many are available to bond with other things and how many are floating around out there. And so uh, silicon has four. So it has four electrons uh, on the outside of the atom. And so semiconductors kind of need to have four. So germanium is in the four column. So germanium makes nice diodes. So silicon and germanium, those make nice diodes. Um, so what are the kind of, what other kind of diodes can we, can we get? Okay. So here we're going to, let's see if I can get this all on camera. Okay. So, uh, silicon is a four. Okay. So in Roman numerals is how many, how many electrons we have. Uh, silicon is a four. Germanium is a four. Um, other types of diodes, uh, microwave diodes, are made out of gallium and arsenide, uh, and arse arsine, uh, arsenic, sorry, gallium and arsenic. And uh, gallium is a three and arsenic is a five. So when you put them together, they end up being a four. Okay. So, um, so you can also pick things out of the three column and pick things out of the four column and you can put those together to make, to make semiconductors. So gallium arsenide is one. Um, so in the old days, uh, they didn't have these things, but they had selenium rectifiers. Those are those big uh, square kind of pagoda looking uh, structures that you see in old radios and stuff made out of selenium. So what is selenium? Selenium is actually an element. It's number 34 here. So selenium is over here in the sixth column. So how does selenium make a diode if it's over in the sixth column? Well, if you take a look at how selenium was actually used, it was made with other things. So uh, uh, cadmium selenide is really uh, the layer in a selenium rectifier that did the diode part, and it was a 2,6. Uh, cadmium is over here in a 2 column. So cadmium and selenium, uh, 2 and 6, add up to 4. So that's how the selenium rectifiers were made. So you say, okay, well, we got threes and fives, twos and sixes. Are there other twos and sixes? Well, there's zinc selenide. Uh, you may have heard of that. Zinc selenide can also make things. Um, so, so you can pick a four, you can pick threes and fives or twos and sixes. So that's how you make, that's how you make semiconductors. So, um, so what are LEDs made of? Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Okay. So LEDs, um, the first LEDs were the gallium arsenide uh, LEDs, uh, and they were again threes and fives. So those semiconductor diodes uh, ended up glowing in the dark and, and, and making diodes as well, so gallium arsenide. Uh, you can also uh, make a diode out of gallium phosphide. It's a very nice red LED. Uh, this is a red LED as well. Um, and it's a three and a five, so gallium and phosphi phos phosphorus, um, uh, gallium nitride, gallium phosphide, uh, they're ides. Um, so, uh, so you can pick one out of the three column, one out of the five column. Uh, then uh, today we make blue LEDs out of gallium nitride. So gallium nitride is a three and a five. Uh, nitrogen is in the five column, so that's a three five. Um, you could start mixing up other things as well. So you could make an aluminum gallium arsenic. Um, so aluminum is a three, gallium is a three, and arsenic is a four, is a five. So two threes and a five add up to four. Um, and that, that changed the crystal structure a little bit and allowed you to make things that maybe weren't red. You can make a yellow one, um, make an orange one. And then there was, uh, more research done and you said, okay, well, we have those gallium phosphide ones. Let's add some things to that. And then there was Al-N-GAPS, um, aluminum Indian gallium phosphide. 
So aluminum is a three, indium is a three, gallium is a three, phosphorus is a, is a uh, fi uh, five, so again, a three, five compound. So, so that's a type of LED. And then uh, blue LEDs were very, very dim until uh, a fellow named Nakamura in Japan figured out that we really needed to add indium. And if you added indium uh, to this compound, they got really, really efficient and really, really bright. So he, he's famous for adding indium. So again, we have gallium, which is a three. We have uh, indium, which is a three. And we have nitride, uh, nitrogen, which is, a, uh, which is a five. So that's, that's blue LEDs. Um, now, when I first started, um, the first LEDs that I was exposed to were in 1980. I joined uh, in uh, an LED company in 1980, and there was an old timer there. And I asked him, I says, you know, we've got reds and we've got yellows. And it, at that point in time, we, we kind of had a hint that maybe we could get kind of a yellowy green. Um, and I asked him, you know, I said, well, what about blue? You know, why, why, why can't we make blue? And he looked at me and he smiled and he opened up his desk drawer. And in his desk drawer, he had this little uh, blue LED and he lit it up for me. And it was very, very dim, but it was blue. And I went, wow, that's really, really cool. And it was made out of silicon carbide. Um, and silicon carbide is silicon and car carbon, which are both fours. Okay, so that was a, a four. But it wasn't very efficient. It was pretty a pretty dim blue. There are also things that glow. Uh, they're not really LEDs. I mean, you might be able to make LEDs out of them, but they're they're more like a vacuum fluorescent and, and things like that. Zinc zinc sulfur and zinc selenide. Uh, those are two six compounds. Um, so so once again, uh, remember four column or threes and fives or twos and sixes. And so you'll see all kinds of things like that. You know, cat selenide, cat zinc selenide. Uh, uh, indium, indium phosphide, you know, the, 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 they're all here. The, you need to add up to, you need to add up to four. Okay, so white LEDs. How do white LEDs work? Well, they're a blue LED with phosphor on top. So the original white LEDs were a blue LED with a YAG phosphor, uh, Y-A-G, YAG phosphor. And uh, so it was one phosphor and you had blue light and then the uh, YAG phosphor made a yellow green. And if you add blue and yellow green together, you can make white. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a very nice white. It, it, it's a cool white, um, but original flashlights and stuff were made out of just one, one phosphor. It was kind of a bluish tinge, yellowy. People didn't like them. The original white light bulbs were, were things people really, really didn't like. And I'll show you how they fixed that. But the original ones were this YAG phosphor. So what is YAG? YAG is, um, Y stands for yttrium. Okay, so let's look up at yttrium. Uh, yt yttrium is over here. And uh, it's, it's, it's in this column here, yttrium. It's kind of a funny, funny molecule. And... Um, then there was A, which stands for aluminum. Okay, so aluminum we were, we've already seen, it's, it's a three compound, right? So we have a yttrium and we have an aluminum. And then G stands for garnet. Now garnet is a gemstone. It's, it's, it's a semi-precious stone. It's, you can, it's pretty cheap. It's kind of a reddish maroon, almost brown uh, uh, color uh, stone. And uh, garnet is usually associated with uh, silicon oxide. So garnets are usually silicon oxides. Um, but you can replace silicon with some other atom. So silicon is a four and um, it's about the same size as aluminum. So you can substitute in silicon for aluminum and you can get something that is uh, yttrium aluminum oxide. So that's the YAG that's used in um, in LEDs. It's a yttrium, aluminum, and oxygen. And um, if you make this stuff, it is kind of just clear. It just looks like 
you know, diamond or something. It just, it's, it's just a clear crystal. It doesn't do anything. You shine light on it. It doesn't glow. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It's not a phosphor. It's just, it's just a thing, right? So you have to, what's called doping, or you need to add another element to this to make it do anything, right? So you may have heard of neodymium. So if we find neodymium on the chart here, it's way down here. It's a rare earth element. So neodymium is here, and it's part of this green series, which kind of lives here. So yttrium is here, and right underneath it is all of these guys. So uh, an atom of yttrium is about the same size as these guys here, right? So if you have a crystal that's made out of yttrium aluminum oxide, and you want to introduce neodymium, um, it's the same size as a Y, so you can substitute a Y for an ND. And so that's the way it's done. That you, you choose this crystal because you can substitute in this, this, this molecule, okay, or this atom. So this atom goes in here. So there's some percentage of atoms that are neodymium and all the rest are yttrium, okay? And neodymium uh, glows if you excite it. Um, the uh, atom uh, electrons will get excited. They'll go up an orbital level or several orbital levels, and they'll stay there for a while, and then they'll collapse back down again because it's not stable. And when they collapse back down again, they have to give up energy. You've put in energy to excite them, and then they give up energy when they relax, and they give out a photon. So neodymium gives off, off about a, oh, it's about a thousand nanometers. Um, it's, an, it's an infrared laser, okay? So neodymium is very, very common for, for IR lasers. All right, so are there any other things you can put in YAG? Well, uh, LEDs use, the, use a cerium. Um, so where is cerium? Uh, cerium's in the same green column uh, of row here. Um, cerium is here. So uh, where was neodymium? Neodymium's nearby, so neodymium's here, cerium's here, and it's kind of the same size as yttrium. So wherever there's a yttrium atom, you could substitute it for a cerium atom. And these cerium atoms, when they excite and collapse, they give up a photon that's kind of a yellowy green color. And if you add blue plus yellow green, you get white. So uh, cerium is the, uh, is the actual atom that glows in, in this phosphor. Okay, so cerium, cerium doped YAG. And it's actually cerium three plus, but that doesn't matter. Um, so you could also make other things since you've got lots of these to choose from. So um, let's talk about how, uh, let's give a simplistic diagram of a, uh, of a uh, atom. Okay, so we're going to draw the old school, you know, we have some kind of nucleus with a bunch of proton, protons and neutrons. And then we have these, uh, these little electrons that zip around and we have different shells, right? We have, you know, uh, orb different orbitals, so different shells, different orbitals, whatever, however you want to call them, zipping around. And we talked about valence electrons when we had four valence electrons. Those are the outer electrons, not the inner electrons. You can have any number of inner electrons, and, but you just, you just count the outer electrons. We don't care what the inner ones are doing. All right. So oh, what about cerium? Cerium has uh, a, 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 a certain structure, right? And so there's going to be some atom, let's, uh, some electron. Let's say it's here, and you excite it. So it goes up to this orbital. And then it, it's zipping around up there. And then it finally slows down. It finally gets up some energy and decides to fall. And it falls back down. And when it falls back down, this is when it gives off, uh, this is when it gives off photons, when it, when, it, when it falls. Okay. So um, you can have electrons go from here to here. And the distance between these two levels sets the color of the LED. But the atom's not all by itself. Remember, it's, it's, it's bonded to these other things. You know, there's some aluminum over here, and there's some oxygen over here, and it's this big crystal. And the electrons are actually shared, right? So they don't stay around one, they, they share, they, they, they zip all around and, and, and they get shared. 
And depending on how the crystal is put together, um, the distance between these layers could actually change a little bit depending on what's put around it. The structure of the um, crystal can actually change this distance. So if you maybe put other things around it, you can get this distance to change a little bit, okay? And so, you know, here's a big yttrium, right? There's a big yttrium over here, and uh, that yttrium affects the cerium atom. So this is, this is say, cerium. And so if you put this together, you get kind of a yellowy green. But what if you replace the yttrium with something else? Okay, so let's go to our chart. Well, what could we replace yttrium with? Well, we could replace it with all these things. We, we've already replaced it with neodymium once. We've replaced it with cerium once. What if we put something else in there? Well, they do that. They put uh, lanthanum in there. They put lutetium in there. They put other things in there. So let's say that over here, we used to have a yttrium, but now we're gonna put a lutetium. Okay, so we put a lutetium atom here. And it's a little bit different. It has a little bit different energy. And so you change the uh, distance here a little bit, make it maybe a little bit you know, shorter, a little bit longer, which means that this yellow green light can go a little bit redder and can go a little bit bluer. You can shift it back and forth by putting in other, other atoms around, around the cerium. So you'll see a lot of uh, interesting phosphors made out of uh, like I said, uh, lanthanum, lutetium, uh, yeah, gadolinium, uh, other things, right? So that's that that that's that's how phosphors are kind of designed by putting different things in in this in this uh, uh, in this crystal. All right, so I want to talk about one more. Th let's see, two more things. Two more things. Um, one is how do you make a better LED, white LED. It, you already have one that's kind of ugly. You have a, um, uh, if this is a wavelength, you have, you have blue. It's around 470 nanometers. And then you have YAG, cerium doped YAG, and it looks something like this. And it's here around say 560 or something. Um, and then uh, you're really missing red. So what if we add a second phosphor? What if we add a red phosphor? Okay. So if we add a red phosphor, now we have red, green, blue, red, green, blue, and um, that will make a very, very, very nice white. Uh, so uh, all of the modern light bulbs are made with two phosphors. They're made with a, a green phosphor and a red phosphor. And the red phosphors, I don't want to talk about too much. They're, they're usually um, silicon oxides or silicon nitrides. Um, and uh, those things don't glow by themselves. You have to put in something that glows. And, and generally what's used is uh, europium. Uh, so here's europium. So europium, when you excite it and it collapses, uh, it gives up a red pho photon, right? So uh, the yellow green ones are cerium and the red ones are europium. You can make green ones out of, uh, well, anyway. The, the basic ones though are the cerium and the europiums, right? And so, so this is the, uh, uh, europium and uh, uh, this one is cerium. Okay, oops, C, C, E, cerium. And this is a, a three plus ion and this is a two plus ion. So here's a picture of some phosphor. Uh, the way that I took this photo was I took a, a white LED and I scraped the phosphor out of the LED. Now it's a silicone, a clear silicone with uh, phosphor embedded in it. So it's like a clear silicone with all these little tiny rocks. All these little YAG rocks and all these little uh, silicon nitride rocks. And I took that and I put it basically in a mortar and pestle and I kind of ground it up so I could separate uh, the rocks and make it a, a very, very, very thin layer. And then I backlit this layer on a microscope slide um, with blue LED light. So this picture here is blue LED light shining through a microscope slide through the phosphor. And so you see the two different types of phosphor. There's the YAG phosphor that's the greenish yellowish one. And then there's the red one, uh, which is the, uh, 
which is the europium. So we have cerium as the yellow green and we have europium as the red and those little rocks um, are now separated so you can see them. Now when they're in an LED, they're all close enough together that you just can't see them. They're just they're super, super tiny. And when they're all smushed together, they, they just look white. You know, the, the blue light scatters and, and the other colors mix all together and it just makes white so you don't get to see this. But if you separate them out, then you can see the individual little rocks and they glow their, their, their associated color.